Hey guys, Phil here with Flat Creek Outdoors. It is a busy, busy week here for us, and I've been spending some money. If you saw my last video on my other channel on Woods Tree Farm, last week we rented a, um, a dump trailer and we dumped a whole bunch of wood chips all over our property and we started to set up our flower patch. And in that video, I highlighted one of the things we recently bought, which was a two bottom plow in our Kubota L3901. Pulled that plow pretty much just fine. There were a number of spots where the clay soil was really compacted, really dense, and it struggled through some of that. I couldn't get the plow all the way to its maximum depth uh, several times. But anyway, it did pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with the result. And we also picked up from the same seller, there's a guy in the city of Richmond who sells a lot of used tractor equipment and uh, implements and stuff. And from the same guy, same time I bought it, he had this bush hog over here uh, for sale. And our bush hog has a lot of rust holes in it and it has a big crack down one side. And I'm probably gonna get somebody to fix that up and then um, turn around and sell that. But he had this there and it was a good price. And I said, let me get that too. So that's a five foot bush hog. Uh, it's an older one, but it's a lot more heavy duty than the one that we currently have, which is an old King Cutter. And then the other thing that we bought is right over here in the trailer. And that's the feature of this video. That right there is a six foot tiller. It's the uh, county line tiller from Tractor Supply. I got in my quarterly neighbor rewards from Tractor Supply. I got 10% off that. I used my Tractor Supply store account, got 0% financing for 12 months. So went ahead and splurged on that. I wasn't planning on getting this, but I kind of talked myself into it because we're doing all of the flower work and we're doing some other work, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute, where we're trying to build the soil and we want to do a lot more with cover crops. So having a bigger tiller than our little three foot tiller that we've used in the past is going to be a big help. I just hope it's not too big for my Kubota. So let's pull this thing out. There's some assembly that's required and then we'll hook it up to the tractor and we'll see how it works. So the basic assembly that you have to do on this is you have the uh, the three point attach points. You know, there's going to be a, a back piece and an angled piece here, and then your hitch pins uh, all need to go on. And then the gearboxes here and on the side both need oil. And that's pretty much it. I was going to do this at home before I got here, but I realized it is attached to this shipping crate here. So I have to detach it now from the shipping crate, lift it up with the tractor again to get it off of this crate, and then, um, and then I can actually begin the assembly. So we knock that out. With the crate removed, we can use this kickstand thing here to hold it up, keep it from falling over. I've got all my pieces laid out here on the ground, organized all of the hardware, got my instructions. So I'm just gonna set the camera up over here. We'll time lapse the assembly. If I encounter anything that's weird, unusual, or tricky, I'll share that with you at the end. And then we're gonna hook this thing up and take it on out to the field. last two steps are to fill the gearboxes. We have this one here and there's that one there at the PTO. 
and there's a vent plug on the side here and when oil starts spilling out then we know it's at the right level. So I've been playing around with this thing for what seems like an hour probably it probably is an hour maybe maybe more but anyway what I found out the PTO drive shaft is um, is too long and it needs to be cut and that's not uncommon I should have been prepared for that and in messing around with this I thought well we have the other smaller tiller I'll go get its PTO shaft and try to get it on here but then I couldn't get the drive side of yeah or the um, the tiller side of the shaft off because it has the clutch on and that's actually like bolted on I couldn't get it off then I tried just half the shaft to see if the other half of the shaft was cut it didn't work it was still too long and then I realized oh you know what the whole time I didn't have the quick hitch hooked up so let me go and hook up the quick hitch so I disconnected the tiller from the three point put the quick hitch on and now I'm going to try the stock PTO again and if this doesn't work we're going to have to come back tomorrow with this uh, with the PTO cut and, or with the drive shaft cut and see if we can make it work so here is the moment of truth see if with the quick hitch installed. We now have enough room. Hey, what? I don't really have enough room to get in here and work. Oh, I think we're gonna have room. Good grief. Good grief. Why is it so hard? I don't know. Well, after what seemed like the entire afternoon, we got that thing set up. We got it hooked up. It got the PTO shaft in there. That PTO shaft was the hardest PTO shaft I've ever had. I haven't had trouble with any others, but for some reason, that thing did not want to go on. So what I have here is a little patch. Uh, this was a little micro food plot that we had last year for hunting season. And just last weekend, we tilled this over and then we ran over it with a little disc that we had. And it is still really, really, really uneven. And this is the reason we bought this tiller. When we want to do a lot of other stuff, we have this entire open field right here. And in the back corner, we've got about another two acres that way that we want to do a lot of soil work. And that's why we bought this tiller. So uh, this is still like really, really uneven. I don't know how well that's going to come in on camera, but even though we came through with a disc, it is just kind of all over the place. So uh, it's also very chunky. So we want to till this up, make it a good plantable soil. And, um, and we're also going to come through and amend the soil with some additional things. So I'm not going to do like a perfect till here today. I just want to try this thing out and show you guys how it works. Uh, so I'm going to do just this little patch and then I've got this big patch over here and this actually goes up and over a hill and back down over there. So this right here is about a third of an acre. This over here is just, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred square feet. So <laughs> I'm just going to do this little piece today. Depending on how this works, uh, I'll have to carve out my course of action for what we're going to do over there. I've got um, something else that we can do if this doesn't do a good job leveling. I've got another piece of equipment that we can try to level this a little bit more and then come through with the tiller and see if that does a better job for us. But anyway, let's see how it works over here.
right, so a couple things about the assembly of this, and it says this in the book. So if you follow the instructions, it, it do, you, you know, you'll be fine. But uh, each of the pieces that we had to assemble at the top there, you want to leave everything hand tight because when it comes down to putting in the last couple pieces, trying to get the holes to line up and everything is a little bit of a challenge. That was the only thing I kind of struggled with briefly, but that was pretty easy. The big thing I struggled with was that the PTO was too long to hook this up without the quick hitch. And um, I can hook it up with a quick hitch, but I don't have those bushings on the bottom like you're supposed to. So I need to get a couple of those, but I will continue to use this with the quick hitch because it seemed like that worked just fine. And um, I didn't even pay attention at all to the top link length. I probably should have had it back a little bit looking at it right now. Um, that's the kind of thing I always observe back on the video footage when I go and watch this. But um, anyway, probably need to tilt that back just a hair so that that can dig in and do what it needs to do. Well, that looks great. I don't know how well you can tell, but the, it's not as level as I'd like. I got a hump there, a dip there, a hump there. And that was just from where, where we plowed it. I had some high spots. So I'm going to come back through here after this settles a little bit and try to level this a little bit better. But I think this is looking really good. It obviously broke up the soil really well. This patch also had uh, turnips in it. And... Um, Looks like it broke up a lot of those. I see a bunch of broken pieces of turnips. And, uh, you know, there's a couple, there's a little one. But you can see, it did what we wanted it to do. It broke everything up. This patch here was full of turnips and uh, clover and other stuff from last year's food plot. And it broke all that up. It exposed some rocks. I heard it hit a few rocks. Um, so we're gonna have to try to find those and fish those out of here. And as far as we know, this field has been nothing but hay field and a little bit of cattle grazing for as long as anybody can remember. So anything that we want to plant in here needs a lot of nutrients. So we've got a soil test. We're going to be adding a lot to this. And then our bigger plot over here, we're going to be adding a lot to it. We're going to have uh, three different kinds of flowers over in this plot. We're just going to do a small sunflower patch right here on this plot and uh, we're going to be getting in high gear with that here real soon so that tiller is going to get a lot of activity way in the back corner of the field that way uh, i've got a lot more mulch to spread around wood chips to incorporate into the soil that's going to get tilled in we're going to set up a buckwheat field uh, for flowers that's going to get tilled in after it's done flowering to add to the soil we're going to do another cover crop after that so anyway there's a lot of stuff there. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel, follow all our videos. We're going to be doing a lot of that kind of stuff in, in the future to build the soil. And then, you know, before we know it, the warm season will be done. Hunting season will be here. We'll be talking about food plots and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there's going to be a lot going on. So thanks for following us here at Flat Creek Outdoors. I'm going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.